Good evening, Zion, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of When Freedom Speaks. Tonight, we have a very special treat for you as a capstone to our celebrations for Women's History Month, celebrating a phenomenal woman, the first woman to be elected a bishop in the AME Zion Church, Bishop Mildred Bonnie Hines. We would ask that you would please go to our website, www.starofzion.org. Subscribe to the Star of Zion. Subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can continue to stay tuned in to all of the great things coming from our communications department under the leadership of our dynamic editor and chief communications officer, Mr. Darren Kent. Our host for tonight is none other than presiding elder, Reverend Dr. Sharon Browning presiding elder of the dynamic Rock Hill District of the South Carolina Annual Conference. Thank you so much for being with us this evening, presiding elder Brownie. God bless you. Wonderful to see you and wonderful to be here. God bless you. God bless you. Well, we are looking forward to a great conversation with you and your esteemed co-host who you will present to us. And we will uh, be back with you after this phenomenal presentation and dialogue. Thank you so much, Elder Brown, and you take it away. All righty. Thank you so much. It is my pleasure as well as, well as a privilege to be able to introduce to you the presiding elder of the Sherrod Bentsville District, uh, the PD Conference, none other than presiding elder Sandra, Sandra K. Benton. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good evening. It's so good to see you today. It's wonderful to see you as well. And we are just celebrating uh, Women's Month and how this the Star of Zion has just featured many, many phenomenal women. And tonight we're going to feature our own bishop, Bishop Mildred B. Hines. What do you think about that? I think that's great. It's about time <laughs> because she is she's a trailblazer. She has uh, shattered the uh, glass ceiling in the Amy Zion Church. So I'm just excited um, that she spotlighted on the last day of Women's History Month. Amen. Amen. And you're absolutely right. She has shattered the glass ceiling. And not only she is a trailblazer, but also she's a mentor, she's a, a role model. And so we're just excited about hearing what she has to say about her journey to the Episcopal See. So Reverend uh, Sam Brown, let's take it away. The journey of the Episcopal See. Uh, My journey to the Episcopacy, the first female bishop in the African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church. What an honor. It seems like I always knew that I was going to be a bishop. I remember when I was a senior in high school, my buddies and I, we were gathered at the uh, department store where I worked and we were all talking about what we were going to do in life and I remember saying I was going to be the first female bishop for my denomination. This was senior in high school. Upon graduation went to school and after college became a senior buyer for the department store that I had worked for since I was able to work. Worked for 10 years. Even though I had stated I was going to become the first female bishop, I eluded my answer to my calling because I wanted to be a normal 
uh, female. I wanted to be a normal teenager, a normal young adult. And I feel, felt like if I answered my call, I'd end up being an old maid. <laughs> um, and after becoming a buyer, and I enjoyed it, I loved it, traveling and spending money, big dollars. I enjoyed it, ran from my calling for, uh, for about 10 years. And then after a while, the Lord got tired of getting a busy signal and I became gravely ill. And I remember bargaining with God. I heard the doctors tell my mother that if they didn't find out um, where um, the blood was coming from because I was bleeding on the inside internally and um, I was so weak I could my eyelids were too heavy for me to open up and the doctors and my mother thought I was asleep but I heard the doctors say to my mother unless we can find out where that blood is coming from she'll be gone before morning I remember my mother saying to them, you do what you can do and I'll talk to the doctor of doctors. That doctor thought that she was talking about a specialist, which she was. They had no indication that she was talking about God. My mother was a praying woman, so she left to go pray. And I laid in the bed, Presbyterian Hospital in Charlotte, North Carolina. And I bargained with God and I told him, Lord, please forgive me for not answering and doing what you wanted me to do. But if you let me live, I'll do it. If you choose not to let me live, please forgive me and receive me into your kingdom. To make a long story short, buzzers started buzzing Bells started ringing. People started, nurses started coming in. And I thought that I was getting ready to make my, my getaway to the great beyond. But that was only the beginning of them finding out where the blood was coming from. That was the beginning of my journey. The Lord healed me. He lifted me off of that deathbed and I kept my promise. I, be, I answered my call and I knew that I had to begin after answering my call. I knew there was a burning inside of me I truly wanted to be the first female bishop for my denomination. And so, upon answering my call, I silently began my campaign. I had a goal. I set my goal. And I worked toward that goal. I would say to women, Set your goals and don't let anything turn you around. At the time when I answered my call, I didn't have very many role models, female role models. 
And I had to become my own role model. I had to set the pace for me, for myself. And I chose to be a female. I chose to be a female preacher. I didn't want to act like the males. I wanted to be a female. I wanted to be a lady. I wanted to be a model for those who would come behind me. The Lord chose to send women in my life to help shape and mold me and to put their hands on me, touch me and guide me, keep me focused. And throughout all of the campaigning, and I must tell you that it was difficult, but I was not deterred because I knew that the Lord had laid his hands on me and had made promises to me and I had made promises to him. I was determined to keep my promise and I knew he was going to keep his. So I worked. I worked against the sexism, which is still very prevalent. I worked against the stereotypical, narcissistic, um, whatever you want to call it, uh, shortcomings, insecurities of the males. I stayed firm to what I believed and held on to the promises that God made to me and held on to the promise that I made to him that I would fulfill that promise. The Lord was with me. He is with me. And I expect him to stay with me. Continuing to make a long story short, I was elected first female bishop in the Amy Zion Church, July of 2008, just a little after midnight. And oh, what a time that was. My journey since then has been a wonderful journey. It's had its ups, it's had its downs. I've had challenges to face, but I'm always up for a good challenge. As old people used to say, no, nobody ever promised me the road would be easy. And as long as you live on this side of the Jordan, you can't expect the road to be easy. For as long as there's a Satan, it's going to be rough and tough. But you hold on to God's unchanging hand. Trust in his promises that he'll keep his promise. Believe in yourself to keep the promises that you have and will make to him. I'm thankful to God for choosing me. I'm especially thankful for him using me. And I'm delighted. Mm, I'm humbled that I was, I am the first female to be elected in Zion. But I'm grateful that I have women young girls looking up to me, young girls wanting to follow in my footsteps. I'm thankful and I'm humbled that I'm able to leave footsteps 
that can be followed. And that's what drives me day by day. That's what helps me keep my nose clean. That there are young girls, young women who are following after me, who are walking in my footsteps. I'm thankful to where I am. And my desire is to continue to walk upright. My desire is to live a life that will be a model for those who will come behind me as God uses me. I thank him and I praise him for what he's done. And I always want to hold on to, I made him a promise and I want to keep it. He made me promise, he's kept it. Thanks be to the most high God. that wonderful video of uh, Bishop Hines' journey to the Episcopal See. It, it was amazing. amazing. Yes, it was. It was amazing. Yes, it was. To, to, yeah, to hear her story about her calling. And I am just honored beyond words um, to be able to follow her and for the presiding elders in the South Atlantic to hold up her arms while she's our bishop. I'm grateful to God for that. So am I. So am I. And the mere fact that with all the bishops we've ever served under, uh, Bishop Marshall, Bishop Fisher, Bishop Battle, mm -hmm. Bishop Johnson, Bishop Carr, Bishop Kenneth Monroe, who would have ever believed that <laughs> South Carolina, the PD Congress, yes. would have an Episcopal leader that happens to be a female. Mm -hmm. And so we're just very gracious that uh, she came to us, mm -hmm. but also he, she's come to us as a role model. She's mm -hmm. come to us as a nurturer, and not just for the women, but also for the men. Uh, Presiding Elder uh, Ben, when you look at the video, what was one of the things that stuck out to you the most? How she ran from her calling. Mm. Yeah, she said she ran 10 years. She ran from God. <laughs> and I found that amazing because I did the same thing. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Wow. But that was, and her journey hasn't been an easy one. But nevertheless, she's remained steadfast in her service to God and the people, especially the people in South Atlantic. She, We see the love that she has for us. And her commitment goes beyond words because Whatever her, is needed of her, she's supposed to do, she's going to do just that and encourage us to follow her. I love that about her. Amen. And so, so do I, because regardless of whatever she has had to go through, uh, even in her health, mm -hmm. she never gives up and mm -hmm. she gives us her very best. That's right. She's always concerned always. about work and she's also concerned about not only clergy, but laity as That's well. Right. Mm -hmm. And because we are her family, uh, right. we feel privileged and honored to have her with us. Also, I've seen her reach out to young women, mm -hmm. uh, 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 young adult women, right. uh, the mature women mm -hmm. uh, in being able to lead us and that we can follow in her footsteps. One of the persons that came to mind was uh, Miss Kanisha Thompson. Yes. Uh, he shadowed Bishop from 2016 all the way up to now. Yes. And right now, she is a student at Harvard University mm -hmm. uh, in her master's work. And so just with Bishop saying how 
uh, the women put their hands on her, mm -hmm. led her, was concerned about her, and wanted to make sure that she stayed focused. She has done, both you and I have seen her do mm -hmm. that in her own Episcopal area. Right. She has. She's done that. And not only has she mentored young women, old, older women, and, and the men of our uh, Episcopal district, but she's also nurtured us Amen. through the whole process. Even when she was down, she would always come to us. And when we see her, she would always lift us up. And during the pandemic was um, a stressful time for all of us. Yeah. And Bishop made a point of meeting with her elders and meeting with her people and letting them know that she was praying for us and she wanted us to pray for her. I will never forget all the prayer meetings we had during that time, the last two years, how we continued to pray for her and lift her up as she waited to get um, the kidney that she's supposed to receive. And mm -hmm. this we know that she will receive that kidney in God's time. And I'm just grateful and happy to be able to be on this journey with her. That is so true. And the thing about it is, not only did she come to us with a vision, mm -hmm. uh, but also she brought with her uh, the late missionary, missionary supervisor, Gwendolyn B. Brumfield, mm -hmm. who was also a strong woman in her own right. And then after she passed away, we are honored right now to have missionary supervisor Lavetta J. Holmes mm -hmm. standing right beside her. Yes. So she had the opportunity to be led by three phenomenal women. But the wonderful thing that I love about Bishop Hines, she sees both male and female as equal. She and does. I appreciate that. So and do she I. Continues to try to give us all of the nuggets that we could have mm -hmm. as presiding elders with the book reviews and, and, and the books uh, concerning leadership mm -hmm. and how she pours into us she and does. she expects us to pour into our pastors, our clergy, our laity. And even through it all, she continues to do that uh, more and more and more. And so I'm just happy about the fact that she cares so much about us, even besides what she's going through. Right. She, her main concern is her work and the people that's mm -hmm. on her team. And I love that about her. I love that so about do her. I. So do I. And she remains so focused on her responsibilities and her yeah. duties, regardless of what she's going through. She always put put us first, put God first and then us. But I love what she does. When she first came to us, she would always pray and say the words to God, Lord, lead me with your, with your light and truth. Yes. No, she would say, send us, send forth your light and truth. Yes. I, I love that about her because it's one thing we do know about God. He will always give us revelations so that we can continue on this journey. Exactly. You remember when we had uh, her welcome here in 2016 at yes. the Kipper Road Transformation Center mm -hmm. uh, in August. It was standing room Ooh, only. Do you remember that? Yes, I do. <laughs> and I'm telling you, people were so excited about having uh, this historical uh, uh, session of, of the first elected uh, bishop, female bishop yes. of the African Methodist Episcopal Zion Church. Mm -hmm. And then she made history by being appointed to the South Atlantic Episcopal District. Yes. That was a hallelujah time. Yes, yes. it was. <laughs> and we celebrated that night. <laughs> Yes, we did. Her coming. Uh, it was uh, a beautiful occasion. Yes, it was. And also, I do want to uh, give credit to the fact that she did lift up sexism because it is alive, mm -hmm. uh, not Amen. only in our community and our schools and our churches, mm -hmm. but even with that being an issue, she did not allow the issue of sexism 
to him put her in a box. Yeah. But if anything, it propelled her to mm -hmm. do even more. Right. To allow people to understand right. that there is room at the top mm -hmm. for both man and woman. And so that's that's the thing that I really liked about her. And the mere fact, and I I, I made note of this, uh, she made no apology about being a female preacher. She did and not. I like that. I love that. I and love that. Early <laughs> girls, yes. and yet uh, be a preacher, a pastor, a presiding elder. And now we see a bishop who, although she is doing a wonderful job, she still holds true to her femininity. Yes. And that makes a difference. It does. It yes. truly does. And that's what we have to do for the women on our district and the ones that we encounter to encourage them like Bishop Hine has encouraged us. We have to keep it going. That's why I'm so proud to be a part of her team. Yes, and so am I. And also I want to hold up the fact that when she was talking about women who have uh, put their hands on her and being able to uh, encourage her to keep going and to set goals, I cannot uh, let this moment pass without giving kudos and, and holding up Dr. Dorothy S. Johnson. Because <laughs> I knew that she was one of her role models, Bishop Kine's role models. And of course, she was a role model of mine as well as other women in the South Atlantic Episcopal. Yes, uh, she was. And so, and it behooves us, even though uh, we are made of clay, and yes, it's human to err. We have to still understand that we have women following behind us in our footsteps. And things yes, they are. are. Uh, and so even though we may make mistakes, we may go awry, thanks be to God, the, the spirit of the Lord can pull us back and, and uh, begin to push us forward. And that is what I've seen Bishop Hines do, lead with excellence, mm -hmm. lead with uh integrity and character yes. and that is what all of us both men and women boys mm -hmm. and girls can take away from what she has done and is still doing in the south atlantic episcopal mm -hmm. district is there any other things that you would like to raise at this time uh presiding elder benton before we turn it back over to reverend uh sam brown as you said um elder browning she has led us with dignity and honor. She's respected us and, and we respect her. And I thank God for her leadership because she will go down in history as the first female elected in the AME Zion Church. So I pray that we will, as a connectional church, be able to elect the next female bishop at our next general conference. Amen. <laughs> And on that note, I agree with you 100%. She is the first female elected bishop in our church. Mm -hmm. And I am praying that she has, she's holding the door open so that other women, other female candidates mm -hmm. uh, can be elected to that grand office. That's and, right. and it is a high office. And it is an office whereas uh, only God can make that happen. And so we praise God that not only did she break the ceiling, but she has held that door open so that other women can follow through uh, that door. So we praise God, we thank God that we are on Team Hines. Go Team Hines. We, we're so honored that yes, we, we have, have a phenomenal bishop and we praise God for what he has done in her life, what he's doing right now, mm -hmm. and he continues to do. We want to thank the Star of Zion yes. for having this wonderful uh, event, uh, whereas they have been uh, praising and celebrating women mm -hmm. uh, in this Women's Month, and also to end it with uh, celebrating our first female bishop, yes. our, bishop our beloved bishop, Bishop Mildred Behind. We do want to thank uh, Mr. Uh, Darren Kent for all that he has done as our communications officer. We yes. 
him and we praise God for what a wonderful job that he's doing in the life of our church. So at this time, Reverend Sam Brown, I'm giving it back to you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Presiding Elder Browning. Thank you so much, Presiding Elder Benton, for that phenomenal conversation and those great words of reflection, um, talking about your experience working uh, with the, the leadership of uh, Bishop Pines. We are so glad uh, to have this moment to celebrate. What a better way to end our programming and our celebrations for Women's History Month than to have such a, an intimate and transparent moment uh, with our first uh, woman elected bishop in the AME Zion Church. Bishop Hines, uh, thank you so much for taking the time to share with us. You are indeed an inspiration and a testament to the mighty power of God. And still eyes have not seen, nor have ears heard, nor has it entered into the hearts of any man or woman what the Lord has prepared for you. So, so thankful for your leadership, thankful for your testimony, and thank Zion is better because of you. To all of our viewers, thank you so much for tuning in tonight. We ask that you would please visit our website, www.starofzion.org. Uh, subscribe to the Star of Zion so that you can continue to stay engaged and be in tune to the relevant uh, current news that we are bringing to you right from our office under the dynamic leadership of our editor-in-chief and chief communications officer, Mr. Darren Kent. Go to our YouTube channel, subscribe. You can see all of our previously aired When Freedom Speaks episodes. They are archived there. And please engage with the Star of Zion because your participation with us only makes us better. Thank you so much for tuning in and thank you for your support as we continue to magnify the Lord's message through media. God bless you. Have a great evening. Mm -hmm.